What's going on, YouTube? Welcome to part two of my impromptu Let's Chat episode with RuneScape content developer and friend ModSponge. If you missed part one where we talked about a lot of current RuneScape stuff, I've linked it in the description down below. In this one, we look a little more towards the future. So sit back, relax, and I hope you all enjoy. Did you do any of the economy stuff? Oh, no, I didn't touch that. You didn't touch the economy oh, stuff? No, okay, no. so I won't... Uh... Um, I was aware of a lot of it and like, yeah, did some... I play tests and whatever, but no, that was a different team. Okay, so I won't, uh, I won't, I won't hit you with the the hard hitting questions. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can give my stuff. opinion. I can give you my opinions on stuff, but that's, that's about all I can do. No, so so they release data on how much GP is actually generated in the game every day, mm -hmm. and by far the 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 GP leader is not even close to anything else, even. Yeah, more than anything really combined. It's basically alkables. It's alk machines, oh, yeah. but if you got rid of yeah, alk yeah. machines, then you would have, you know, just people alking or high people high alking high or alk whatever. Or something, right? yeah, alt yeah. farms or auto clickers or, or whatever. The the stuff that people do and hopefully get banned for. But um mm -hmm. would you ever consider because I mean it, it looks like a pretty close game right they've got the grand exchange tariff and what that's going to do is it's going to basically perfectly offset, offset the yeah. difference in in death costs right yeah and the economy is still inflating mm -hmm. would you ever look at drop tables just for elder god wars because elder god wars drop tables i think are in my opinion i think they're great and they're very they're very diverse and i know you're the one that made a lot of them um mm -hmm. but they also have a respectfully a crap ton of alkables <laughs> an insane amount yeah like I more than anything agree. else in the game so would you ever look at it and be like wait we could actually get rid of the inflating economy entirely just by reducing elder god mm -hmm. wars and zami alkables by like 30 percent um it's not really one for me because it's not really my area like, obviously i've designed designed a lot of the tables a lot of time that's like designing the, the small items that go on them um as an example, like choosing the items that go on Zug, but I didn't balance the numbers or anything. Okay. Um, my opinion on it is, is every boss that comes out right now, I think Mod Jack's touched on it before, but it's like every every drop table that's released feels like asked out to do the last thing. Otherwise, players won't necessarily do it. It's like, why would I go do Zami if I can sit a hell weird and make the same money, right? It comes down to that. Um, my opinion is, yeah, we should try and stop this whole drop table growth thing where it's like this drop table is better than this one and this one's better than this one and then this because that's what we're at right now right where you go and do arch glacor or carapac whatever and you get a load of just get a load of straight cash yeah um yeah i i i'd 100 be on board for doing that not necessarily just elder god wars but like just just go and hit every single drop table in the game and just kind of get them up to a a linear table where it's like cool this is i don't know tier 80 boss so it's going to drop roughly this amount of money per hour and you kind of do it that way whereas right now it's like cool new thing uh this is going to be better than the last thing but then players are going to do it way faster than you expect so it's going to be even more money is that um, in commons or are you talking about commons and uniques as well um commons and uniques like that's not that's not an active thing that jmods do they're not going like this has to beat the last thing it's just i feel like it's just an inherent <laughs> power creep in terms of drop table that's kind of built in it's yeah. like cool let's let's compare it to the last thing how does it compare okay um it's roughly on track okay cool that's fine and then players will go and do it slightly faster than you expect because so now you suddenly got a bit of a bit of drop table creep and then it'll happen on the next thing they compared it to the previous one cool this is around 10 mil an hour okay sounds good players go and do it and it ends up being oh i can do it at 15 mil an hour right, and then you just get this slow creep up um of value and yeah so i'd, I'd like to kind of I'd like to see us take it back to the drawing board, kind of refresh it all, <coughs> get rid of some of the, the meaningless stuff, add some more meaningful stuff to some of the old bosses, especially. Um, and yeah, just kind of bring everything down to a more normalized level, because I feel like there's a lot of these kind of peaks that are just a bit too far out of out of control right now. Okay. Um, with I mean, with that in mind, what do you think about the current Raptor event? One I kill think, per day, triple drop rate. Um, but I actually think I think it's fine. Um, 
I don't think it's really going to impact many items. Um, I think it's a cool investigation um, slash experiment. Because I, I think that's the intention. It's an experiment on like how could we do drop tables differently and stuff. Um, I, th I think it's interesting. Um, that, that's all about our, all I have on it, really. Um, okay. I don't. I think anyone that's worried about it is probably over worrying. Um, I don't think it'll impact that much. Um, I yeah. I yeah mean, it's, I, it's, it's like I could I could, I could do, go do go get a, a free. Say I go do Carapac hard mode. Like oh yeah, I've gained three kills instead of one, but I'm gonna sit here for an hour anyways. So actually, I've got. I don't know, nine kills instead of seven right when yeah. you actually then kind of expand it it doesn't mean as much as i think pe people are worried about i i mean i would i would agree with that i mean the current end game kind of metaphor is you set up max bad luck mitigation and then you do a 2k zami kill and you've got a one in 1. 1.5 for a drop but your drop <laughs> rate before that was one in five it was already so it was, it was already, already really, good, right? really good yeah exactly. you're already at one in five um but personally for me I actually, I love it. And the reason I love it is it's a little more out there, but it's mm -hmm. one of the first updates that's actually incentivized increasing your difficulty level instead of yep. increasing your grind time. Yep. And uh, I actually agreed. love that. The amount of people I've seen who are like, well, I got to actually push Zami, like time to go up to 500%, time to go up to 1K, because when yep. you're tripling the efficiency of one drop, you want to you wanna increase your difficulty level. The amount of people that have learned hard mode suck because they want that one in six for a unique from there um yep. and i think that's something that i would honestly i would love to see recurring just for that reason in particular which is that it incentivizes actually working and progressing your your difficulty level and, and kind of honing your pvm skills no i i mean i completely agree with you uh yeah completely agree i think it's a yeah that's a good reasoning for it um i think it's good for those players that don't necessarily have as much time to play as well it's like cool i've only got an hour to play um so now I can go do this boss and I feel like I'm actually progressing towards my goals rather than I know spending 10 minutes to an hour doing bosses and yeah, having having way less impact. Um, I think when you look at other games, especially a lot of them, probably more, the bosses are probably more like elite dungeons where you'll spend, I don't know, like an hour doing a dungeon run or a boss or, right, or something. You probably spend like an hour going through this raid, this dungeon, and then you're like you you're way more likely to get loot. And I think this system would be good for that sort of thing. Um say raids, I don't know. Um if we did a full raid and once a day it was like cool yeah we got triple drop rate. So cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that, but then that's hard. Of like, you don't want to de-incentivize like playing more. You don't want, yeah, you don't want exactly. You don't want players to feel like, cool. I'm not gonna bother doing this now. Yeah, it's a really hard one. That um, I don't envy the the guys involved with that. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, that's a really <laughs> hard one to get right. I think uh, on the RuneScape stream, uh, Mod Jack was speaking about it as well, and it's like, if you go, yeah, if you go at all too far, then people yeah. are only gonna log on and do their drop buff and then leave you want to incentivize people to actually play the game you don't want to punish them for playing that's, yeah more. that's really yeah that's really really hard so i, I think yeah. one per day is is pretty much pretty much spot on i think if you did any more than that it would yeah people would just kind of yeah. wait yeah be like cool yeah log in do my boss log out and then it's like cool that's that's not a, a great gameplay session here's a question mm. can i ask you about animate dead yeah go for it so I think there's been a lot of discussion of late with Anime Dead. I mean, it's continued on from the end of the last year about how it's very, very strong. I know you've spoken in the past. You've said it's the, the, the place that it appears in the combat calyx makes it probably stronger than it should be. Yes. Um, with yesterday's Ring of Death change as well, <laughs> you're now taking 80k without Anime Dead and 30k with Anime Dead. Yeah, so you're saving 50k damage on that on that bleed just because it mm -hmm. works. Um kind of i guess first off what are your what are your thoughts on on that and is there a plan in place to either i mean adjust anime dead or possibly make it work with other combat styles Ooh, we had to you had to put that other combat styles bit in there didn't you um, i did did so i feel like animate dead 
it probably is a rising problem where it's one of those like the more we add the more you go okay cool i'm just gonna do it this way i have no <laughs> no reason to go back to like doing power armor really or yeah it's, it's i feel like it's gone a bit too far um because obviously the intention was to make tank armor usable or give a reason for it and it's, it's kind of it's probably gone too far where players like, oh, I'm just going to use this now forever. I have no reason. This is nice, easy mode. Um, mm, with the Ring of Death stuff, that seems there's a simple solution for that. Just make it not work? <laughs> maybe make it not work, yeah. <laughs> like, it seems to me like Animate Dead should probably only work on core combat styles. So like only works on melee damage, only works on magic damage, only works on range damage. Or like you go even harder and you go cool, it only works on melee and magic because, you know, the whole combat trial triangle thing. Um it seems like that deals with that. There's a lot of bosses where they're like, cool, let's do typeless damage for a reason. And then I make dead goes cool, I'm gonna reduce you anyways. I feel like if something's typeless, it's probably been done that way because they didn't want it to be mitigated. Um Someone, someone in chat just said it's more crypt than anime. It's not. Dead. It's anime it's dead. So wrong. <laughs> it's, yeah, I was about. I didn't I realize you chat. could be that wrong. Oh, um, wow, you're going, you're going in on this poor innocent chatter. But I was just typing. It's anime dead, no, not crypt bloom. Hundred percent anime dead. <laughs> uh, crypt bloom is innocent. It's just crypt bloom did nothing wrong. It's just that it happens to be the best way to use anime dead, right? Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of. I don't want to say there's, there's one issue with it, and it's just it's too strong. And there's there's a lot of ways to change that. Um, I th like you, you could just straight up nerf the power of it. I think I forget what the number is, but there's like it can't reduce damage to lower than sixty percent of the original hit, or something like that, or it can't reduce it to lower than twenty five percent. Like there's numbers you could fiddle with, or you could just change the location of where it applies and it becomes much weaker like if if animate dead was like the the first thing to apply in combat calculations i don't actually know if players would really use it yeah it would be um, inconsequential at that point it's the fact that yeah. it, it applies i mean you obviously know this but after your prayers and after your other armor rating and every other debuff you have and then after that animate dead shaves off a little at the end yeah um which means like Say, say, say I've got a thousand damage incoming. Um, if I have animate dead on and I'm praying, it's like animate dead is essentially reducing the, the initial hit by twice its value. Because um, obviously the prayer is reducing that to, to 500, then animate dead, say knocking off 300, it'd be the same as animate dead, just knocking 600 off the original. I think I've done that number right. Five, yeah, yeah you're spot on, I think. Um, yeah, so so if you, if you threw animate dead at the beginning of the combat calcs, and it means essentially it's half as effective as using prayers right now. Um, half as effective as using animate dead and prayers right now, sorry. Um, which is a solution. I, I wonder if in the same vein it's worth just, you could just do a number tweak on it, right? And it's like, cool, it, animate dead can't reduce a hit to below 50% of its max hit instead of the 25 or whatever it is right now. Um, and that probably achieves the same thing. How do you feel about the discrepancy between magic tank and range melee tank with relation to animate uh, dead? That, in my opinion, isn't a animate dead problem. That's a uh, melee and range tank don't actually exist right now. And they don't have the tools to work or make themselves unique. Like, I wouldn't want to add animate dead for melee and range. I think I've spoken on this before because... I don't want all the combat styles just to come into the same play style and feel the same. I feel like that's something we should actively working from. We don't we don't want combat styles to feel the same. Um, you want to feel like, cool, I've thrown on range gear. This now feels completely different to mage. And that's something we should be working towards. Um, so with with that in mind, if you're you're saying range and range and melee tank don't really exist, which I completely agree with. Um and I think that's you know one of the reasons why there's such a huge discrepancy in combat style usability in the current state of the game. Uh, so I guess the the question or the the thought that kind of stems from there is: Should we expect that those exist at some point? Um, I guess it depends on your definition of some point. 
Um, like, <laughs> like, is there is there anything in the works to add melee or range tank, whether it's gear or whether it's spells or whether it's anything else? Is there anything in the works to make those styles viable for bosses that do a lot of damage? Um, I wouldn't. I don't know if there's anything actively in the works. If there is, it's not on, not what I'm working on. Um, that being said, I know it's something that comes up fairly often. So it's one of those things where it's like someone working on something. Cool. What's the reward space? Cool. I'm going to do melee tank stuff and then bang it's out before you even know it. Um, so it's pro probably not being worked on right now, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Um, but it, it very easily could just happen. Um, I've, I've, I've raised it before on previous projects I've been on. Like, is this, does it fit in nicely to do, um, some sort of melee tank buff thing in this in this update um it just so happened that the, the updates were, were a no it didn't really work um <laughs> i'm doing this farming update can i sneak out a, a new herb that makes melee tank armor <laughs> yeah. it's, it's that sort of thing like i feel, I feel like yeah if it, a, a dev could quite easily do it um but i, I, I think i don't think there's anything actively so just for for perspective i'm kind of on team just make anime dead work with the other styles and the oh. only reason well the only reason for that is that it's quick and easy and to me the current state of mage tank being the only tank style it doesn't really make sense unless there's kind of a current plan to relative you know with with a relative time frame yeah, saying, build out yeah, the yeah. other styles do you know what i mean um, it's kind of like yeah. when people were saying just ring of death stand right it's less good than the death rework way less good it's actually kind of stupid but it is immediate and it is easy and it does alleviate the pressure so to me my ring of death stand take which by the way i did not like the ring of death stand i think it was a stupid idea but my ring of death stand take is that anime dead for all styles would be great as an intermediary they can slap that out next week on a tuesday and that's a pain point for melee and range mm -hmm. users that's gone um in a part i don't disagree in part i do I think actually the Ring of Death stand is less egregious than just slapping Animate Dead on melee and ranged. Um, on the basis that if we added Animate Dead to melee and range, I don't think we'd ever be able to remove it. I don't think players would accept that. Um, so, say, yeah, say, say we did Animate Dead for melee tomorrow um, on the basis like, cool, in the future we'll make this better and we'll make melee more unique. And then when it comes to making melee more unique and we remove it, I think players would throw up such a fuss unless it was like a full scale rework to the entire skill um i don't think they'd take a like for like trade the thing to consider is like just throwing something in can cause way more problems for you in the future i guess yeah you have another thing to balance around yeah that's fair exactly. i i just i know it's a it's a big pain point and i'm sure there are mage and range users i mean i don't really know if there are any but if there are any, um, I'm 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 sure they're probably like not discouraged, but a little disappointed to hear that it's not like soon on the horizon, uh, or not likely to be soon on the horizon. But that's fair. It's, it's not it's not immediate. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I get what you're saying, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, it could be like someone makes one and it's so well thought out and well designed that it's just like the best thing ever for the entire game, right? Rather than a, a quick and dirty, is an animate dead for melee. Okay. Yeah. No. That's that's fair. And I, I definitely understand your perspective on it. I guess for players, we want things now, right? It's like combat is out of whack right now, and I think it's harder to have a long term approach when you don't really get to peek behind the curtain at all. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. it's definitely it's, it's definitely, and I'm sure like in 2023, combat is going to be changing in in a lot of different ways. Um, just no, we we don't know if necromancy is a combat skill or a support skill or whatnot, and that's you know that's classified information. But either way, surely like all of the previous skills, archaeology and um, invention, there are going to be mm -hmm. combat implications there. So I don't know. I, I I feel like all of the metas and, and a lot of different things are going to change anyway with the, as a result of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like in say in the past six months, I feel like. If you just went, like, how much has changed in the past six months, you probably would say not that much. But when you actually go and look at it, like, I feel like combat already is way smoother just for a few updates. Now, some of those absolutely could have just been free stuff that you give to players. Um, 
I don't necessarily deny that. At the same time, yeah, I feel like, oh man, the last six months feels way different. You know, just through Dive and um, the puzzle box. Dive is sick. Was that one of yours, by the way? It wasn't, no. Um, I've been pushing for it for ages. It's sick. Where I was like, I was like, I, I need a way to jump around without equipping this freaking uh, siphon boots or these dual wields because it's just clunky and it feels horrible. Um, so I was fully pushing it for ages. Um, and then I think it was Mod Ashes made it. Yeah. Mod Ashes? Um, Mod Ashes. I think it was Mod Ashes. I think that's his mod name. Um, just like, but it, it, I th maybe it was Mod Stew. I think Mod Stew came to Combat Council and just like, cool, give me something, and we'll we'll do it as the quest reward. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and it was just like all of the Combat Council was on board at that point. It was just like, yeah, we we want um, to make mobility more accessible. This is like a. Is it that quest? What quest was it? It's a uh, succession. <laughs> it was succession. Yeah, yeah. It was like we wanted to be way more accessible. Um, and just remove the clunk. Um, and this seems like a fairly decent way to do it. Um, so no, not mine, but something I heavily pushed for for a while. Cool. Well, no, I think I also think it's alleviated, circling back to Zami, it's it's alleviated a lot of the kind of P7 woes that less experienced players have had. Not all mm -hmm. of them, but um, I certainly think, uh, you know, a, a more introductory level PVMer isn't going to have a three-way bladed dive switch. Yes. Or a macro I mean, like, or whatever you want to do for it. it, it and it's kind of crazy that, that thing just existed in the beginning. So removing it is just fantastic. Like they're the kind of switches that don't really mean anything, but everyone feels like they have to do, which, yeah. Um, it feels great to remove that sort of thing from the game. Um, yeah, no, that was just, I just had a note that Dive was sick. But, you know, you're right. <laughs> in, the, in the last six months, there have been a lot of tweaks to make combat, you know, feel better or, or work better or interact better and i think the way that you have approached it, it it's really clearly a long-term process where you want to keep going through all of this ancient code and, and and rewrite things and change things and and make combat kind of better moving moving forward absolutely i have a um, hypothetical I think, I think oh go ahead just, i think that's just the stance of all the combat council right now like we all just want the to modernize the system and make the the whole game feel better which is obviously a great place to be so let's say in six months time you wake up and you've just finished a complete rework of the whole combat system all the changes to basic Yikes. abilities all of the changes to you know monster specific weaknesses and accuracy, crush crit. and accuracy crit everything right you do everything and it's all ready to be sent out mm -hmm. would yep. you call it the evolution of the evolution of combat yes i i uh um, eoc2 so for the um game jam uh that just went where i did i tested a bunch of it myself and mod ryan um we just did a load of combat stuff together we did a presentation and the first slide was the evolution of the evolution of the evolution of combat just down for ages um so we 100 percent yeah the eo 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 um just because it's the right thing to do beautiful would you ever call it mutated eoc and then you cross oh, out no. muta you cross out mutated and then in little parentheses greater. greater what's your take on that out of interest well, i hate it just i the, hate greater the naming convention yes well here's the thing it's not greater it's different mutated makes more sense it's not great yes. greater implies it does the same thing but more and yes. mutated implies different. So I actually, I much prefer mutated and I think greater barge I, is stupid. It's mutated. I also don't know if I'd even go with mutated. I'd just go with something more thematic to where you get them, I think. Like evolved like, or, oh, you mean just like a completely like, different name? Yeah, yeah, just, I mean like you get, so greater ricochet would be something related to rapture in some way. So it'd be, I don't know, like shadow ricochet because he's the shadow colossus, whatever his, his title is and he has the shadow bombs and stuff. You know what I would love I about that? I think that's just a way cooler naming convention. I, first off, love that idea. And second off, it is so infuriating that I, upon clicking Gconk, don't have access to the lesser version. Because yeah, it's yeah, a greater yeah. upgrade. It is, like, because there are, I mean, you, you know this, of course, there are points where regular Fury is better than greater Fury. And oh, there are yeah, also yeah. points, this is totally self-serving, where as a content creator, I want to make a you video to with do, the yeah, bad yeah. stuff. And instead, I have to start the video by being like, Hi, I have Gricko on my bar, 
but I don't have chroming, so it's not that good, so it's okay. And it's just like, oh, it's so frustrating. Um, that's, that's something I want to address in a game jam at some point, uh, or a regular project, I guess, where we make some way of converting abilities back and forth. So that way, when we do more graters, if we do them in the future, we can do more wacky stuff, where it's like, I uh, don't know, Greater slice now generates no adrenaline but deals on like triple damage or something purely as an example. Whereas there's clearly like a reason I would use this, but there's also drawbacks. We can do them because players can just go, cool, toggle it back off. I don't want to use this anymore. Um, so yeah, 100% I'd be on board for making some way of flicking between them. Um, I wouldn't want to do it on the fly. Obviously, we have like Magma Tempest and Targeted. I wouldn't want to have access to Fury and Greater at the same point. Yeah. Because I'd like to think that's a decision you make before going into an encounter panic by slice <laughs> no that makes sense <laughs> okay i have a very like open question for you for that it. is it should be a it should be a pretty free one um but coming into 2023 mm -hmm. you're now I, are you a senior con dev now uh i'm regular content dev you're now. regular content was, dev now. you were a junior junior yeah and made it to regular so as a first off congratulations i know that was like many months ago um and very very Thank deserved um what heading into 2023 are you most excited about with regard to developing and working on runescape combat or content yeah <laughs> he's trying to get the old the old necromancy bit out of me there oh combat uh, no um so I, i'm not on it but necromancy is looking very good um, i'm very excited for that that's the main thing um, the thing I'm on right now, which I don't think, I don't know if it's been announced, so I won't say anything, um, is fun. Um, working with a new dev who's great. Um, we've got a lot of new faces joining, which is cool. Um, so yeah, Necromancy is my primary excitement. It's looking awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pass the microphone back to you because that's all the questions Ooh. that I had. Uh, do you have any questions for me? If you could make one change to combat tomorrow, what would it be? Tomorrow? Oh, man. Tomorrow. Uh, you just you just get to go, cool, this is done. This is made. What is it? Oh, is this what it feels like to like be asked questions? Oh, I don't like this. Yeah, your, oh, your, your brain goes blank, right? Oh, my goodness. I can't think. I'll, I'm just, I'm hiding in the tall grass on Crash <laughs> Island. Um, if <laughs> I can make one... Us, just, yeah. That's a really good question. I think, okay, I'll do one tiny one and one big one. I think mm -hmm. the tiny change I would make is I would make it so that when a hardcore loses a life, they don't lose all the stuff they have equipped other than their protect dead items because 90% of hardcore deaths are disconnects. And it seems weirdly punishing for no reason. So that yep. is one that I would do. And they're lost item claimable anyway. So it's like, it just saves everybody time to do. So that would be one. And then that's my tiny one. And I think my big yep. one, combat tutorial, hands down. Oof. That would be my change. My change would be, it would be, uh, now you said any size, so it would be yep. streamlining combat. Some of the stuff you you mentioned with with basic abilities and and effects, just cleaning up the combat system, as well as a comprehensive tutorial that helps new players better learn and understand the combat system. So would you not then therefore change your? I wonder if you change your answer to make combat work in a way where players immediately understand what's going on, so they don't need a tutorial. Oh yeah, I guess if I could do any size, yeah, that would be, <laughs> exactly, I mean, that's right. even a step further. Yeah, never mind, no, screw the combat tutorial. Um, make combat so <laughs> make everything intuitive work how and understandable you work. and nice sounding and great so that you don't exactly. even need a combat tutorial. Yeah, that's a way, way better answer. Yeah, the hard to agree with that. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, but yeah, there's so much I would do, I think, though. Yeah, I think, yeah, making it all intuitive is one of my primary goals um and just like increasing the readability all over i think is a is a big thing yeah no i think i i i you know this i've been privately and publicly pushing aggressively for that for like five years <laughs> so you already know how i feel about that doesn't need to be restated but uh i'm i'm glad we've got a man on the inside who's uh you know feels feels really really strongly and passionately about it as well mm -hmm. um i got one more for you Go for it. How do you feel about phase practice mode? 
phase practice mode. There's been a lot of talk about it lately. I think it's mm. Phase 7 Zamorak, and I mean, it's the same conversation that happened when people struggled with Phase 5 Telos, where it's like, could we just practice yeah. that one phase? Um, oh. I don't know, really. I think in my ideal world, practice mode's not even required. Um, I think like I look back to when I was younger playing RuneScape and like the struggles were like doing Nomad or doing Jad right and the elation that came with doing those things finally I feel like practice mode might actually take away from that slightly um, so whilst it's hard because the game's developed so far since then yeah. I think whilst it sounds good in theory I don't think it's necessarily that great. I don't. I don't think it'd make that big of a change, personally. Um, I, it's like, mm. <laughs> I think that so one of, hard. One of the big differences is that bosses are a lot grindier than they were back then. In my yeah, opinion, that's... like Nomad, yeah, you set up for that one fight, or like I don't know, I had to. I I still remember this. My one of my first deaths in RuneScape, I had to run it back on the Pest Queen. The pest queen absolutely <laughs> bodied me and I had to regroup and like watch a yeah. 240p unregistered hypercam video of it and then go back and figure it out. And I think bosses being more grindable pushes to, you know, practice mode to be good. But I practice also, perfect, yeah. I, I kind of feel similarly to you in the sense that I don't think it's as make or break as people make it out to be for, mm -hmm. for, for most bosses. And I also feel like the ring of death changes and everything else, like you can get to P7 pretty reliably. If, if that's the phase that you want to practice. And I think if you're not getting to P7 reliably and that's why you want P7 practice mode, then there are improvements you can make on the first six phases. Yes. That you're no, also no, I learning. I completely agree with that. Um, yeah, I think it, it'd just be a bit weird to just be able to like take a section of a boss anyways and just do that over and over again. I think, I think it's just odd. I, I, don't, I don't really know how it sits with me. I think something being brought up in chat as well is what doesn't feel good about failing P7 over and over again, you know, even if death costs aren't crazy, even if you get there every time, is players are very efficient now. It's less of an adventure yeah. and more of an efficient endeavor to acquire currency so that I can buy dies yeah. and not die alone, right? And if most people are playing for that reason, um, or, or similar to that, then it feels like a colossal waste of time to get up to P7 every time just to probably die to it. But I also do yeah. think it's a barrier that it's overcomable, in in my opinion. Yeah, yeah no, I agree with that. Um, I think the P7 part comes down to... It's actually something I wouldn't mind changing, is like the barrier to entry to P7. It, it just goes up rapidly. It's like, cool, P1 to 6, super easy. And then it's like, P7, cool, dead. And you go, all right, I'm going to do this really easy bit again. P7, dead. Yeah, right. that's the so that, issue. I think a lot of people have... Like, that's the part of my problem is that there's there's no gradual incline there. It's just P7 is such a massive spike. Oh, here's um, here's one related to that. It. Would you ever make P7 at 100% Zami? Just exactly 100%. Would you ever make the the bomb charge up at half the speed? Um, just for 100. I don't know if I'd do it for just 100. I'd do it. So that that phase was just easier and then scaled to where it currently is. Um, so it's like, cool, done 100. I can do that safely. It's way easier than it is in live, say. It's like, it feels like P7. It doesn't feel like P30. Um, and then, yeah, scale to the live values. Um, so it, could, I don't know, it gets way harder, way harder, way harder until you're at the live. Yeah. You, no, I... You have that nice incline um because then players can learn it right it's like cool that would say say the first one's super easy and then the next one's a little bit harder it's like oh that was a bit spooky and the next one's like okay jakey i'll practice that for a bit and make sure i nail it and then you kind of remove that need for practice mode yeah no i i would agree with that i think the the learning curve is is i mean it's not necessarily steep with regard to like the difficulty but it's very different Right, P seven is very different. Very different. It's, it's very punishing if you mess something up. Um, it's just it, the the entire feel of the fight changes a bit. I feel like 
where it's like, cool, you've kind of just been trotting through, and then suddenly it's like, cool, I'm on a clock, I need to deal with this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing, and if I don't deal with it, I'm dead. No, I, I totally agree with that, and for what it's worth, I pushed to 1k in solo on release, and then I quit pushing because I had issues with P7. I completely quit, and I revisited it like six months ago. I've now, mm -hmm. I'm, I've done three full days of pushing now, and nice. day one, I lost... I was getting less than one kill per hour because I'd get into phase seven and I would die. Um, mm -hmm. And then days two and three, I haven't failed a single P7. It just, it took a bunch of time to click and I did have to grind it out just for five hours. Cover. And I think I'm a better PVMer because of it. And now, yeah. even when I went up to 12K and we did those kills, P7 was my best phase. Cause like, I, mm -hmm. I just, I took the time to understand the mechanics of it and, and learn it. And like, I feel like that was valuable that it was difficult like that. But at the same time, it is also the reason why I gave up on pushing for six months. Yeah, it's a hard one. Exactly. I, exact, I feel like if that that entry barrier was lower so that, yeah, you could gradually go into it, uh, you'd probably have less, less people going, you know, forget this. Uh, more people going, oh, this is doable. Let's see how far I can go. Yeah. And that's obviously the intention of, like, the entire boss is, like, it's basically uncapped. Um, it's, the intention is players can go as far until they hit a a roadblock and the intention is not like 100% roadblock you can't go any further <laughs> how are you uh, are you impressed with the people's max and rage currently or is this sort of what you were expecting are people further than you thought they would get how long's it been uh, uh july 4th <laughs> so wow. july oh yeah of course it was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i always forget that we did that yeah um it's been eight months, ten months, months? eight months, eight months, eight months, eight, six, six, six months, six months, July 4th, one, two, November, three, <laughs> November, four, December, five, six months, six months, it's been six months, six. it's been six months. Um, <laughs> I thought players would be a little bit further, I think. Um, I always expected them to hit a hard block where they're just like, the base damage is too high, we can't get any further. Um... It goes back to what Ram Robert always says, like, don't underestimate players. They have all these tools. They know how to use them. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I thought players would be a little bit further, but then I also expected them to hit a hard roadblock at some point. Um, I, so, I, I, I don't know. I will basically. say, the range autos, if you miss a prayer, for, like, do 16,000 damage currently. <laughs> yeah, see, this is, this is what I was expecting, like... <laughs> At some point, if you don't have devotion, like, will that just kill you even with the prayer? I don't know, but I'm sure someone will configure out the damage scaling. I've got it somewhere, but I'm sure someone can do it. I, um, yeah, I, I will say, speaking with the team, people on the team are still running calgs. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. no, like, it's, it's, it's actually ridiculous how mm. well set up it is. And uh, so people are just above, I think they're probably at 12,500 now. In terms of enrage, and uh, my prediction is people are gonna they're gonna comfortably cruise without making any changes all the way to twenty k. I don't think really anything has to change. I think between yeah. twenty and thirty k, some changes have to happen. I don't think P seven gets any harder because the bomb caps and it's already pretty mm -hmm. close to captain. There are so many great ways to make P seven very very smooth, especially with the ring of death now. You can do oh, a so yeah. you can do. I, I tried it out yesterday and first tried it, but can do an 100k bomb in a solo without a sign. <laughs> yeah, you can I, just... I imagine the ring of F's actually made that a lot easier, right? Like e even like for new guys going in at 100%, like just because you can just essentially tank out a bunch of the, the bomb damage. Yeah, so you've got uh, big hit you and get then that extra time to to do the DPS if you're not great at. Yeah, ex for sure. So you've got big hit, right? And then you've got the four 25k hits and then 100k uh -huh. hit. If it's maxed out. Yeah. So what you can do is you can pre use a pulverized switch mm -hmm. for 25% damage reduction. And then yeah. you pop a mort for the first big hit and your ring of death for the second big hit. So really all you yeah, need to you do is tank the four 25k hits, which is relatively easy to do because you can pop a mort and then Cade and then reflect and then debilitate. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And you can get through it every time. Yeah, I think the ring of death is pretty cool. I quite like it. Um, I don't know what's happening with it. 
Well, first off, before we get into chat questions, just say thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I had a ton of fun chatting. No, my pleasure. We we haven't caught up in a long time, so I'm glad we got a chance to do it. And as always, just huge fan of of everything that you've done for for RuneScape and RuneScape Combat of late. It's been awesome to get to chat and and hear your thoughts and your insight on, on so many different things. So yeah, just really quickly wanted to say I really genuinely appreciate you being here. I mean, I can just go and drop the old Uno Reverso there. Like, completely appreciate everything you do. Um, love your content. Um, and love how vocal you are with the team. It's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, what are your thoughts on Zami helplessly AFKing on P7 while the bar charges? Oh, just yeah. I hate, I, I hate that. Um, I feel like it's, it, we should look to change that because that, yeah, it feels weird. It's wrong. Um, I don't know what the intention was with P7. P7 was very much Raman's baby. Um, so I don't know what the full intention was for when he fills his bar, but I feel like it wasn't just sit there aimlessly. Um, so I think if if the bar hits full, either like get some passive Infernus damage ramping on you, so you get like a timer on you, basically I can't last that long. I agree. It I'm does feel really weird that he though. just, he, you know what he it just, is? He just stands there like he's doing, he's doing a NPC contact, just chatting to someone. Like his mom told him to take out the garbage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, he's chatting to Guffix. Like, I'll something. be back in five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We should change that, in my opinion. Um, How do you feel about ability stalling? Sucks. I hate it. Remove it. Really? Absolutely hate it. Awful. Uh Awful. So you wouldn't want to like b- bake it into combat with like a stall and nope. a release? Nope, gone. Nope. Okay, absolutely not. Cool. Get rid of it, kill it. We're going rapid fire. Change, change the system so you don't need it. Because um, obviously there's issues with melee where like you're running up and stuff, so you need the the ability to stall into your kit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I absolutely hate it. Um, I, 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 I know the, uh, the the speed runners would be absolute panicking right now, but no, yeah. that's fair. No, entitled to your opinion. <laughs> um, do you think you could beat me in an arm wrestle? <laughs> I don't think I should comment on that. How do you feel about adding bad luck mitigation to other bosses? Um, some other devs are keen on it. Um, I would rather change the drop rates so they're not so incredibly rare that you feel like you need bad luck mitigation. Um, looking at things like the the core of Lang and whatever. Um, Okay. When I look back at the bosses I used to do, like when I was doing DKs and whatever, I think it was like one in fifty drop rate for a ring, like back way back when. Yeah. Uh, which at the time it felt like an investment because at the time they were actually hard. Um, but yeah, I'd like I'd just like to see slightly more common drops rather than the mitigation. I totally agree with that. By the way, my stance is you don't need mitigation if the drops are common enough. Um, with everyone carrying enough runes for every single spell in the game as like a simplification of combat, kind of like the vigor thing. Would you ever just make an Omni spellbook that combines all the spellbooks? Hmm. Mm, that's a hard one. I feel like no, I wouldn't want to. I feel like I'd like to differentiate them more. Um, obviously, there's issues with that because of spellbook swap and stuff. Um, but I feel like it'd be cool if, say, you're doing some big group raid boss in the future like cool we need someone on normal magics for x y and z reason say they're playing like a support character and you have a dps on ancients or something and you have someone else on lunars i think that'd be my ideal rather than just frying everything at the player at once um i'd rather yeah players make meaningful decisions before they go into stuff before just having everything so accessible you'd be more on team removing of spellbook swap or not removing of it or but limiting it in some way potentially yeah, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. Cool. Um, thoughts on the current, not the current state of melee drinking? Uh, <laughs> I was trying to avoid it for this whole two hours, uh, but I yeah. couldn't do it. Um, I feel like melee just needs a full rework, personally. Um, melee's core problem down, more core English. What core problem <laughs> down? Wow, I am tired. Melee's core problem comes down to all of its power being in one slot, in my opinion, which is the weapon slot. Like, it has... <laughs> you look at how many melee weapons there are, right? And they compare it to Range or Magic. Range or Magic do cool things by throwing it in the ammo slot, whereas Melee's just like, I've got another spear! <laughs> I can't use these at the same time! Okay. 
but now I have to switch and this sucks, right? Um, <laughs> so melee, I feel like needs a bit of a redesign so that some of those, that power can go elsewhere because at the moment it's all just trying to be tucked into one slot. It um, sounds to me like you're alluding to the infamous Reddit thread that involved wrapping a scourge around your Lang sword and then putting your helmet in your ammo slot. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I think it'd be cool if, like, say, 120 smithing or something. It was like, yeah, you can start combining melee weapons and it becomes like the melee support. Um that's kind of like what I think Invention was originally pitched at, right? I think I yeah. remember being a player and it was like, at one point there was a picture of like a a cow fight, um, a cow fight king sword, a uh, dry gore with like a different bit of a different sword attached to it, with like a Derek <laughs> great axe. And it just looked wacky. I think that's what it was originally pitched at. Um, it could go to that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I've, I've brought it up before as like, it comes down to that quick fix versus are oh, we just kind of shooting ourselves in the foot by making this even more of a problem? Um, like saying, oh, yeah, now your spear and have your leg on it. And now, oh, it's tier 95 because your Zuck sword with the special attack. And you've got this like super bleed sword. Oh, but then someone in the future wants to make another bleed thing and it becomes more of a problem down the line because now like oh can i combine this thing with this thing and yeah it just it just ends up becoming a problem definitely it works in uh, current runescape it would fix melee right now but building it from that problem. in the future is impossible that's the problem. exactly um so it's like yeah how can we uh, it, it needs a a grand someone to kind of get the time to just do a bit more of a grand redesign and go cool how can we fix this permanently where this won't be a problem and where the entire style feels really good Oh, I have, this is not from chat. I'm not going to pretend it's from chat. This is for me. Um, okay. How do you feel about how Iron Men can intercept mains, but mains can't intercept or heal Iron Men? Uh, or like get Calg buff from them or like anything else? So I'm not an Iron Man guy. We have like some people, um, that have, I think there's an Iron Man council. I believe so. Um, that handle that sort of thing where they like, they, they got like max Iron Men or whatever. Um, so they handle that sort of thing. My opinion, just like from what I've read, I'm not experienced because I've not done it. Yeah, okay. it just seems like it should just be a thing. It should just work. I don't know why it's yeah. It's, it's kind of like holding on to that last little bit of like let's just make everything inaccessible to Iron Man because that's what they signed up for. And it's like now that you can just PVM together, it make it's just weird. It doesn't need to yeah need to exist. I uh, I went uh, to Duo Rago on my hardcore with a main <laughs> account, and I normally go with an Iron Man, so we just sept each yeah. other. And I went with a main account, and during Reflect on P5, they can't intercept me, so oh, I no. actually can't Omni Power. I'm just like, right. yeah, yeah, so yeah, anyway. yeah. yeah I um, totally agree. It doesn't really make sense. It, it need I think it need a little bit of thought, or purely because like, say I make a new Iron Man. Someone just going like do intercept whilst I'm doing like all the quest bosses and stuff, right? And I can just cheese my way through them. So it probably needs a little bit of thinking in respect to that. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't see why I couldn't just check if you're in like a group boss or something and just let you do it. I think that'd be fun. Cool. I uh I think that's everything I saw in chat that I felt was pretty within scope. So I think we're uh I think we're clear. Great, cool. Well, thanks for having me on. I'm going to go um, eat and sleep because clearly I can't English. Uh, right, awesome. Good chatting. Um, I'll speak to you soon. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much once again for, for coming on, Brad. Can we get some love hearts in chat for Mod Sponge coming on, taking two hours out of his evening to chat with us about RuneScape, which is very, very kind of him to do. <laughs> um yeah thanks so much for everything you do and have yourself a great evening cool. cheers mate catch you in a bit